I've been doing a lot of tributes on social media recently, a uh, video on YouTube about Han passing not too long ago, on our Quantum Revolution Facebook page, which exists. It's not, uh, you know, not nearly as active as this YouTube channel, but um, go to our page, Quantum Revolution, say hi there. On our Facebook page, I had a little dedication to, to Meatloaf. Uh, my wife and I had danced at one of his songs at our wedding. And so we had that up there. Meatloaf died recently. And uh, today we're gonna do a little tribute to Ray Liotta, who died uh, a couple weeks ago. And he's one of the one of my favorite actors. He's a lot of people loved him in movies like Goodfellas as Henry Hill and in, in, in Field of Dreams as Shoeless Joe Jackson. But I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite all-time roles. And it was as Dorothy Maka in the movie Revolver, okay? It's a fabulous movie. Uh, I'm gonna do an entire uh, lecture on this before too long. Love this movie. It's a, an incredibly good Guy Ritchie film on the difference between spirit and ego. And it's a gangster type movie in which he never mentions the word ego or spirit throughout until the credits. And yet what Ray Liotta's uh, role is as Dorothy Maka, as a mob boss, he is ego personified. He plays the role of ego better than anything. And again, it's not mentioned, but he just acts it. What are some of the features of him in this? I mean, he, he has a tanning bed in his house, right? He's always wearing gold chains. Of course, he's a mob boss, very physically focused. He's totally into money, obviously, right? He's all about gold everywhere. And so he's ego personified in many different ways. And he has a couple different scenes in which uh, he, he demonstrates really what the ego is. And it's subtle in many ways. Now, I sent one of you guys the text. I forgot to set this up beforehand. I need the text real quick about one of his quotes early on in the movie. Um, he says something that is like spot on. Thank you, sir. It's spot on describes what the ego is. He's talking to Jason Statham's character who ends up being the spiritual character in the movie, um, Jake Green. And uh, Dorothy Maka says to Jake Green, a wise man once told me there's only one role in this world, a small question that drives all success. The more a man invests in this question, the more powerful that man will become. Can you guess what that question is, Mr. Green? What's in it for me? Okay, that is the ego personified. What's in it for me? Now, Guy Ritchie uh, learned Kabbalah. He's all about Kabbalah. He does a lot of Kabbalah movies, um, and he, it's one of the greatest teachings in the world. Thank you, sir. Catch. Uh, and he's all about um, it, putting these themes. I knew this was going to happen, so you predicted this. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so we, uh, that was just my wife and colleagues saying I'm talking too loudly, so <laughs> I'm sure she'll forgive me. Anyhow, the, the uh, Kabbalah teaches that the ego, which is actually Satan, is the devil, and it's inside of all of us, and it's our one common enemy. And all of us actually have to learn how to defeat that enemy at some point. And what is the ego's function? The ego only does one thing. It seeks pleasure and avoids pain. Okay, that's what it does. All of us have that. We're afflicted with it, it's human nature. We seek pleasure and we avoid pain. That's its goal. Well, Dorothy Maka d displays this perfectly well throughout the movie. And in that quote early on, he says, what's in it for me? That's the whole point of the ego. Ego equals I, it actually is in Greek, the, the word I. And so what's in it for me? I am different than you. I'm separate from you. And, and Ray Liotta's character uh, personifies this throughout the movie. So I'm going to talk about two scenes. And in this group, I'm going to show you these scenes after uh, this little video. If I showed you guys the scene, YouTube would not let me uh, put this video up because of copyright. So I'll show you guys. But if you guys want to see it, go look up the donation scene in the bedroom or the elevator scene in the movie Revolver. And you'll see what we're talking about. And they're beautiful little scenes. And uh, Dorothy Maka plays it so perfectly. In the donation scene, what's happening is about $7 million got stolen from him, okay? Uh, something like that, huge sum of money. And he's very nervously sitting around while his henchmen are trying to get the money back. And he's very nervous, he's sitting at a table and he's jeering his fingers, you know, he's very focused and he's only worried about his money and he wants to get it back. And he has a, a, a boss, if you will, that is eager to get his money from from the Dory Tumaka character. And of course he's worried about his own safety and he's worried about the money. And so he's sitting there really focused on it. And at one point, um, while his henchmen are torturing some of these guys that they thought took the money, one of his, uh, his top aides comes into the room holding some newspapers and he, he, he regrets to inform him that the money's gone and they can't get it back. But he shows them newspapers. And on the top newspaper it says, headline, Maka's massive donation. 
And it says underneath that the mob boss and the, the casino owner, Dorothy Maka, apparently donated $7 million or whatever the sum is to a children's charity, right? And when he reads this headline, because he didn't do it, it was Jason Statham's character, Mr. Green, the spiritual guy, that actually helped steal the money, and he donated to charity. But then they told the media it was Dorothy Maka, or the uh, casino owner and the mob boss. And there was a moment there where he reads his name in the headlines, right? Maka's massive donation. And this other part of the ego takes over. He realizes, wait a minute, I'm getting a whole lot of positive attention. And then he whispers, you know, the voice inside of him says, uh, inside of his mind says, take the credit. This feels good. Take the credit. No one will ever know. Because he's getting a lot of positive attention for doing something good, but he didn't do it. Well, the ego's happy about that, too. It's getting satisfied one way or another. Because it doesn't matter whether it's money or, or positive attention or something, the ego's going to be happy. But then his aide tells him what actually happened. And that Jake Green had actually stolen the money and had uh, don made the donation. And then this f uh, infuriates Dorothy Maka. And then he actually, at one point, like, hits his head. And he's, and he's saying in his own mind, they're all laughing at me. They're all laughing at me. And he, he says, shut up. Why? Because all of us have that ego voice inside our heads. It's telling us stuff. They're all laughing at me, right? It is the ego. And it's the thing that fears and it shames and it, you know, it, it has the guilt and all that kind of stuff. But it's possessive and it asks the only question, what's in it for me? Kabbalah teaches... Even, even most of our kind acts are mostly selfish because we're doing it so we can feel better about ourselves. What, what they say is outer giving is really inner taking. You know, I'll do something nice so I can get some sort of award or pat on the back or something. He's a nice guy. And he nails it in that scene. He, even, he recognizes that voice in his head and he says, shut up, right? Fabulous scene and it shows how easy the ego can flip. As long as it's getting fed, it's happy. Now, my favorite scene of all time in any movie ever is the elevator scene in Revolver. We're going to do a lot of this later on in a video coming up. Um, the importance of spiritual development throughout this scene. But in this scene, we're going to focus on Ray Liotta's character again. He's laying in bed, and the spiritual guy, uh, Jason Statham, appears at his bed, and he's got a gun. And you'd think in a gangster movie based upon the rivalry, rivalry that... Uh, that um, Jake is going to go ahead and kill Dorothy Maka, but he doesn't. Instead, he forgives him. He asks for forgiveness, and he acts all spiritual or whatever, and then he walks out of the room. But this totally freaks out the ego. And it's what I love about this scene so much is the ego is flummoxed, right? He's looking very dazed and confused at Jason Statham's character. He doesn't understand at all. It's a different language. The ego cannot understand being spiritual. The ego doesn't understand forgiveness. The ego doesn't understand mercy. You know, why would someone do that? Why would he forgive me? Or why would he ask for forgiveness? Why would he be humble? Very confusing to the ego. They're diametrically opposed. But then he freaks out because he thinks head games are being played with him, and they sort of are. And he gets up and he goes looking for, for uh, Jason Statham character who had just left. And he goes into an elevator, does Jason Statham, and he has a very spiritual experience, even though it doesn't look like it, in the elevator. When he exits the elevator, there's Ray Liotta standing there, pointing a gun directly at him, Wearing just a thong and a gold chain, which happens to have a cross on it. Very ego there for a character who's not being particularly Christian. And he's pointing a gun right at Jason Statham. And he asks this question, what's your game? Right? He's so confused about this thing that, that uh, Jake Green is doing. He says, what's your game? In New Eyes, we talk about how there's two games in the world. If, uh, if you're bowling and someone's golfing on your bowling lane, you're going to be irritated at that. But if they think it's, a, it's a, um, an actual golf hole, they're playing a game that you think is, is a different game. And so we can be playing different games in this world. Some people, most people, most of us most of the time, play the ego game, the what's in it for me game. But the spiritual game is the unity game. It's the healthy one. It's the we're in this together game. It's the love your enemy game. It's the only way out is to play this game game, okay? And so... Uh, uh, Dorothy Maka cannot understand this at all. And he says, what's your game to Jake? And Jake just ignores him. In fact, he walks right by him. And, and uh, Dorothy Maka cannot pull the trigger. Why? Jake's being in like complete spirit zone. No one can hurt you when you're there. 
and he walks right on by, and this freaks out Dorothy Maka, and he starts trembling, and Ray Liotta does some great acting here, right? Starts trembling, he starts crying, and he starts begging, fear me, right? He says, fear me. Why? That's what the ego wants. Remember, the ego is Satan. It's here to cause pain. Go read the Bible, flip out the word Satan or devil for the ego. It'll make a lot more sense. It's the devil inside of each one of us. The idea that I'm different than you, we're somehow different, I'm better than you, or you're better than me, and all of that, all the pain, as they say in the movie too, all the pain comes from this focus, the ego mind inside of us, right? And so Jake is able to walk right by him. Again, we're gonna do a video on this soon, but Dorothy Maka is left there trembling, okay? And so this is the ego's function in the world. It's gonna cause fear, it's gonna be selfish, it's gonna look out for itself only, it's gonna even act nice sometimes, because if it gets positive attention, it'll do that, but it's still greedy, still looking out for its own, uh, own self. Now the beauty of it, and I don't know if Guy Ritchie did this on purpose, if anyone knows, let me know, there's a whole lot of people that like to evaluate and analyze this movie. But the name Dorothy Maka itself, I wondered about that. What's the, what's the name mean? Most of the stuff in this movie is very intentional. So I researched it, and the name Dorothy means God's gift. That's interesting. And Maka means plain. And I thought, man, this is brilliant. Everything Guy Ritchie does is brilliant. This is brilliant if the name Dorothy Maka was picked because of that, because here's why. Here's the trick to all of this. If we're on a spiritual journey, we were given a gift too. See, we're divine spiritual beings have a human experience. And the gift that we get is the ego. Why? Because the ego is going to make you be your best self. The ego is the actual enemy that you have to learn how to love. It's the thing that's causing you all your pain. You have to rise above it. As it says in, on, the, on, the, on the cover of, of the, the DVD, your mind will not accept a game this big. Okay? Well, that's because it's really difficult to beat the ego. Because the ego mind thinks this is all there is. It's a physical world, we're physical people, you know, it thinks it understands love and truth and all that. The fact is, is you'll end up going through so much pain, which eventually leads to a crucifixion, which is the destruction of the false self or the ego, the reduction of it, and in the very least, the taming of it, which we all have to go through in order to experience what? As God's greatest gift is, the spirit within, right? Because the ego will push you to be your best possible self. It's also the only way out. Enter through the narrow gates, gate, says Jesus, right? It's the only way out. When it comes right down to it, Maka, it's a plain thing. It's boring. If all we're doing is going after money, boring. If we're just going after power, boring. Trying to win Super Bowls, boring. If you're just resenting guys because they're winning Super Bowls and you're not, boring, okay? It's a very boring game, this ego game. The fascinating game is the spiritual one. We all have a choice. Go after money, go after possessions, go after power. See how well that works for you. It's plain compared to absolute joy that is the pursuit of the spiritual game. The forgetting of the true self and the remembering of the true self is the journey, right? And that's the fun game. We all have the choice to play it. Most of us aren't playing it most of our lives until we come across it. And then once you realize that you have an opportunity to play that game, you know what's gonna push you across the finish line? the ego.